all operations, leaving passengers and employees stranded. And Harris County DA John Holmes will talk live about his order to the state prison director. These and other stories coming up next on The Late Report. Guess who just blew away Ford's late entry small truck and payload? Chevy S10. Both have equal maximum payload ratings, but S10's doesn't change when you add options. Ford's payload rating does change. Their optional engine cuts off 21 pounds. Air conditioning, 78. Automatic transmission, power steering, and rear bumper bring Ford's payload way down. The same options have no effect on Chevy S10. There's never been a truck like it before. Worms, annihilate aphids, banish beetles and thrips, and defend against disease with ortho tomato vegetable dust. Convenient, ready to use ortho tomato vegetable dust is tough on insects and disease, but won't harm plants. And our specially designed package lets you spray up, down, all around without clumping or clogging. A healthy harvest of delicious vegetables. At Ortho, our concern for gardens is always growing. Some important news about overnight packages. Nobody likes a late package, no. so we recommend United Air Express. Yeah. That's United Airlines' new overnight package service. United Airlines! They have all those United jets. Big jets. Flying all over. They have a new fleet of trucks. Lots of them. Driving all over. And they have a really nifty jingle. Mm, fly the friendly skies. <laughs> door to door, overnight. Packages prefer United Air Express. You guys look great in stripes. Oh, really? Bonanza, weeknights here on 13. From 13 Eyewitness News, this is The Late Report. With Sylvan Rodriguez, the sports with Bob Allen, and the weather with Ed Brandon. Good evening, I'm Sylvan Rodriguez. Dave Ward still out with that back problem. He is due to be back tomorrow. With a billion dollar debt, Braniff International Airlines tonight has lost its battle to stay in business. The airline has canceled all its flights effective immediately and told all its employees to go home and clean out their desks before they leave. Reporter Jamie O'Rourke has been at Intercontinental Airport all night and has this report. I didn't know what the hell was going on. He said, this is it. The hustle, the whole Braniff airline, he says, all Braniff airline is out of business. As security guards were put on alert, the lines were long. The Braniff employees, now without an employer, were haggard. Did Braniff give you any help? No, not yet. So you've got a ticket and it cost you how much? $190. And all it is is paper? I don't know. There was no one to help recover baggage, confusion was rampant, and not all airlines were honoring the defunct Braniff tickets. Okay, you need to purchase a ticket. Will you honor a Braniff ticket? No, sorry, that, but we do have a special right now between Houston Hobby and Kansas City, and it is $45. I'll buy it. Okay. But making good on tickets wasn't the only confusion. What are you trying to find out here? I'm just trying to find out where my son is. He had reservations well, to, to come home on Braniff today, and... Uh, he uh, so far hasn't gotten very far. Fortunately for him, son Gary Hatcher was on what may have been the last passenger flight for Braniff ever, arriving at 7.25 p.m. Braniff workers who had abandoned their equipment were replaced by supervisors. Through the paint-chipped nose of the airliner, pilots looked dejected. And amazingly enough, none of the deplaning passengers had any inkling of the shutdown. The, the pilot said that uh, he was, you know, hoped to see us again on Branham, uh, just as we got out of the plane. Those taking the shutdown blow the hardest may be the veteran Braniff employees who now see only tiny birds flying where the giant Braniff planes once visited. Jamie O'Rourke, Eyewitness News. Well, in other news, Harris County deputies tonight have served W.J. Estelle, the director of Texas prisons. That order commands his presence in a Houston courtroom next Monday. The order from District Judge Ted Poe asked Estelle why he ignored a previous court ruling and turned away 68 inmates in Huntsville last night. Harris County trucked the inmates to the TDC just like every Tuesday, but this time they were turned away. Estelle and the state say they are under federal court order to relieve overcrowding in the prisons, but so is Harris County. Today, Harris County DA Johnny Holmes requ requested the order from Judge Poe, demanding an explanation from Estelle. And tonight, Mr. Holmes is with us live in the studio. Mr. Holmes, the first question, I guess, is what do you expect from this order? 
Well, I think you stated it yourself. We expect an explanation as to by what authority uh, Director Estelle or the prison board uh, presumes to advise the lawful orders of a district court here in Harris County that we're not going to obey it. And uh, that's what we hope to determine on the 17th of May. Well, we do know that it is a board that made that decision. What kind of legal action could follow? Well, the, the nature of the action that's been requested is a hearing to determine exactly the status and why it is uh, uh, the Department of Corrections is refusing to honor the district judge's orders uh, with regards to taking convicts from Harris County. Uh, presumably at that hearing there will either be one, a defensible position in law available to the director or else the judge has the alternative of uh, finding him in contempt of the orders of the court, uh, which is punishable uh, by placing him in jail. What was your reaction last night when you heard the news about all of this happening? Well, my first uh, information uh, I obtained via a telegram that was uh, uh, sent via law enforcement teletype to each of the sheriffs, and uh, it was somewhat startling to all of us when that was communicated uh, here to Harris County that uh, without much warning at all, uh, all of a sudden the doors of the penitentiary are closed. Well, it does cost Harris County something on the order of 13 to 14 dollars per prisoner per day. Might there be a suit to recoup some of that money? The, I expect that there will be an effort on the part of, of at least Harris County to recoup the costs uh, of housing what would otherwise be state prisoners. I, I believe that matter will be taken up before Commissioner's Court in the very near future. Okay, District Attorney Johnny Holmes, thank you very much you for bet. being with us live here in the studios. And another news, a big story tonight. A man dressed as a priest carrying a knife lunged at Pope Paul II this evening in Portugal. That attack comes one day before the first anniversary of the shooting of the Pope at St. Peter's Square. We have a late report from Portugal just in from ABC News. The Pope was speaking to an estimated one million worshippers at Our Lady of Fatima Shrine. Toward the end of a ceremony at the Shrine's Basilica, a man dressed as a priest lunged at the pontiff. Witnesses say he drew a dagger, but before he could strike the Pope, he was knocked down by security guards who seized both his arms. John Paul continued the ceremony, giving the final benediction as the assailant was led away. The incident comes on the eve of the anniversary of an attempt on the Pope's life in Rome. The pontiff arrived in Lisbon to a triumphant welcome. He had come to Fatima to thank the Virgin Mary for saving his life last May 13th. The Roman Catholic Church says the Virgin Mary appeared to Portuguese shepherd children at the shrine 65 years ago. Early reports from Portuguese news services say the Pope's alleged assailant is a Spaniard in his mid to late 20s. There was no word on whether the incident would affect the Pope's trip. Ted David, ABC News. Back here in our country, the trial of John Hinckley Jr. became highly emotional today when Hinckley's father said that he blamed himself for the shooting. John Sr. wept on the stand when he told the court he gave his son a couple of hundred dollars and told him he was on his own. That was three weeks before the president was shot. John Jr. sat stone-faced while his father cried, but he did become upset later when testimony of a movie actress was played. The government says Hinckley fired on the president to impress actress Jodie Foster, who plays a teenage prostitute in the movie Taxi Driver. Ms. Foster, who is now in Europe, testified on videotape that she received more than a dozen love letters from Hinckley, all dropped off personally at her Yale dormitory. Some slipped under her door. One said, Jody Foster, love, just wait. I'll rescue you very soon. Please cooperate. Foster said she had been given a similar note in Taxi Driver from a deranged loner named Travis Bickle, who does try to rescue her by going on a wild shooting spree, killing several people. When asked on the videotape of her relationship with Hinckley, Miss Foster testified, I don't have any relationship with Hinckley. With that, Hinckley got up and walked out, followed by a team of U.S. Marshals and his lawyer. He did not return until after the Foster videotape was over. Tim O'Brien, ABC News, Washington. Well, there's been more military action in the Falklands. We'll have that story and more coming up after this. Lincoln Mercury announces a better offer than Cadillac on three extraordinary cars. The luxurious Lincoln, the unmistakable Mark VI, the elegant Continental. Unlike Cadillac, you get three years free scheduled maintenance and three years free limited warranty. Three years of virtually cost-free driving. You also get a 5% introductory cash bonus. Unlike Cadillac, you benefit whether you finance, lease, or pay cash. See your Lincoln Mercury dealer for a better offer than Cadillac. 
In Japan, people demand a lot from a 35mm camera. That's why thousands of Japanese have gone beyond ordinary automatic 35s to the Pentax ME Super. The ME Super is really two cameras. On manual, you use it like a professional camera. But on automatic, it's as easy to use as any 35. The Pentax ME Super. One reason we sold more 35 SLR cameras than any other company in Japan or in the world. This is Pulsar Quartz technology, accuracy to seconds a month. This is Pulsar Quartz elegance, slender designs with diamond accents. The miracle of Pulsar is the price, $49.50 to $165. Now there is no reason to spend more or settle for less. Pulsar Quartz, always a beat beyond in technology, in value. Pulsar Quartz watches available at Joski's Fine Jewelry Department. Touch it. Touch it. I love it. It smells great. It's touch of scent. Not just another room deodorizer, but an exciting new idea in air fresheners. Touch of scent is always at your fingertips, whenever you need it. Touch of scent's decorative dispenser looks beautiful in every room of your home and is easily refillable with your choice of four delightful fragrances. Another fine product from Scott's Liquid Gold. Touch of scent. Touch it. Well, there has been more bloodshed over the Falkland Islands. Argentina fighter bombers swooped out of a thick fog today and attacked a British warship. Great Britain then fired its Sea Wolf missiles, and two of the Argentine jets were reportedly knocked from the sky. Argentina then launched more air raids, but there have been no reports of further casualties. A British Sea King helicopter ditched at sea, but all aboard have been rescued. The luxury liner Queen Elizabeth II, meanwhile, tonight is on its way to the South Atlantic, carrying 3,000 British troops, including Scottish bagpipers and the feared Gurkha fighters. These are ground assault troops that would be used in any land invasion of the islands. It will take the QE2 10 days to reach the South Atlantic. At the UN peace talks, there they dragged into their fifth day. Well, how many times have we heard, don't forget to read the fine print? Well, one Houston man did read it, but he still had problems getting a refund. So he called Action 13's Marvin Zindler. Most often, folks don't bother to read the fine print in a contract. However, when they do, it can be to their advantage. And that's what happened in this case. Vacation Quest International is a corporation that offers time-sharing vacation plans where travelers buy the right to use condominiums at vacation spots around the world for one week, two weeks, or even a year for life. On January the 9th, John Ratliff paid $1,400 down on a $5,000 contract for one of the vacation plans. The contract contains a clause that the purchaser can cancel for a full refund within 15 days. Within 13 days, on January the 22nd, Ratliff canceled, but to this day, he hasn't received his $1,400 back. So I hand-delivered a letter in person to him and asked them to sign a receipt for the letter, which they wouldn't do, and then turned around and sent the letter the same day, certified mail, so I would have receipt of them receiving it. Um, I pointed out the fact that there was a 15-day right of cancellation clause in my contract without penalty, and um, they still just kind of hem hawed around. The last thing I got from them was there wasn't anything that could be done that the salesman had received their commission, the, um, the loan had been bought by Oxford Finance. I then wrote Vacation Quest. When I went to the company's international office, I asked Vacation Quest President Jack Higgins why didn't Ratliff get his refund well, after meeting the terms of the Ratliff contract. And we told him that upon a receipt of a copy of this letter, which was sent to the sales room and not the international office, that we would promptly refund his money in full. So actually, this letter that I just gave you, that's all you needed then? That's correct. Okay, and he will get a refund back? We will send a refund to him. Personally, I think you have to be careful in selecting the sharing plans. Uh, actually, Vacation Quest is one of the few such plans I haven't received complaints on, with the exception of this one. I like the idea that they give you 15 days in which to cancel. That should give you plenty of time to make up your mind. Just be sure you know what you're doing and don't get mesmerized by a fast-talking salesman. Marvin Zindler, Eyewitness News. And right now it's time to check with Bob Allen and the sports NBA series tonight. Yes, in the Philly Sixers, Philadelphia 70, Philadelphia 76ers, even up the series at one, they played better than I talk. We'll come back and talk about it in a minute.
Remember the good old days at the food market when you got your money's worth? Well, that's the way it is at Wine Garden today. Real service, top quality, and low prices everywhere you look. And Wine Garden Red Dot Specials this week include Glad Trash Bags, 30 count box, only $2.49. And Heinz Ketchup, 32 ounce bottle, only 99 cents. And Kool Aid, 10 quart size, all flavors, only $2.59. Yours today at Wine Garden. This is Kingwood, the livable forest north of Houston on US 59. It's a natural community with all the comforts of a city, carefully tucked among the trees. Offices, country clubs, restaurants, shops, and homes. 11 villages of homes priced from the 50s to $400,000. Come, experience the livable forest this weekend and see a special showing of new homes. Kingwood, it's a natural. For some of you, there'll be occasions when ordinary transportation won't do, and you'll opt for more European luxury, like first-class seats with their own armrests, thick pile carpeting, reading lights, independent suspension and extra insulation for a smooth, quiet ride, and above all, room to fit even parties of seven comfortably. For times like these, Volkswagen's new Vanagon GL performs without a hitch. For great eating you thought you could only get from a deli, try Rath Blackhawk Sliced Meats. They make the tastiest sandwiches, like meaty bologna stacked high. Rath Blackhawk Cooked Ham makes a delicious ham fest sandwich. Zesty Rath Blackhawk Salami makes a Grand Slam Salami Sandwich. And with Rath, great eating doesn't have to cost a lot. Available at Rice Foods. The NBA Eastern Conference Finals are all even now with the Philadelphia 76ers knocking off the Celtics in the Garden tonight, 121-113. Fourth quarter, Boston up by one. Andrew Toney busts through with two of his game-high 30 points. He was a big man for the Sixers in the red. Toney again brings the Sixers within one on that turnaround. That was the doctor there. Caldwell Jones, who was held scoreless in the last game, came through with 20 for Philly. Watch Caldwell keep hitting from that left side. Give the ball to Caldwell Jones. 20 points on the night. Philly takes a 107-102 lead. Tony's 10 fourth quarter points with a difference in the game tonight. 30 on the night for Andrew. Tony's series is even. Game three is back in Philadelphia. University of Houston guard Rob Williams made the announcement that everybody knew he would make and Tim Melton was there. When this past collegiate basketball season got underway, people began asking Rob Williams if it would be his last for the Cougars. Today's announcement that, in fact, it was. I think I'm going to forego my senior year and uh, go to the NBA. Came as no surprise. The new wrinkle may have been what eventually drove him to that decision. He did not have the great year predicted for him, in large part because of a preseason knee operation and a midseason wrist sprain that led to speculation he was thinking more about money than victories. If I had to do it all over again, I'd rather be in the Final Four to score two points than to be in front of my TV set watching somebody else. And maybe getting to the Final Four would have soothed all the booing fans and the critical media if not for his scoreless night against North Carolina. From what a lot of the articles I read and a lot of newspapers and everything, uh, y'all was practically running me out of the town anyways. True or not, Rob really had nothing to gain by returning to Hoffines Pavilion. Instead, he'll turn pro. And North Carolina game or not? I think he's a first-round draft choice, yes. One, one game didn't make me one of the top players in the country, so I don't think one game uh, would destroy that either. Tim Melton, Eyewitness Sports. Well, the Astros took the day off today while Al Howe was taking the next two weeks off with a pulled hamstring he, hamstring he got last night. While stealing second base, now the slide into second wasn't what you'd call picture perfect. Art pulled a hamstring and he had to hobble off the field. Watch him kamikaze there into second base and he'll just jam it up against the base like that. He's on the 15-day disabled list. He'll be replaced by Denny Walling and Danny Heap. Elsewhere in the National League today, the Braves broke the Cubs' four-game winning streak. Giants over the Expos. Padres and the Mets were rained out. Phillies lead the Dodgers 4-1 to one in the fourth inning. That one was rain delayed for a bit. In the American League, A's beat the Orioles 5-4. White Sox over the Blue Jays 9-2. Tigers and Rangers were rained out. Royals lead the Brewers 8-5 in the seventh inning. And the Red Sox beat the Twins tonight 4-1. And finally tonight, a fellow by the name of Kevin Kogan, who was on the Penske race team at Indianapolis, today set the fastest lap time ever 
at Indianapolis Motor Speedway with a time of 206.3 miles an hour. He's a teammate of Rick Mears, who also had, he had a 203 over the weekend. 206 and 203 so far for the Penske team. They got to go in as the early favorites at Indy. So, All right, Bob. Thank you very much. Well, at 6, Ed was telling you about some violent weather up a little further north. We had wind gusts, though, right here. Had some very strong wind gusts in Houston, and there could be more. We'll talk about it when we come back. Thanks, fellas. Great take. You know, every once in a while, you get something for a song. Like a free beer at a chili cook-off. And now you can get free air conditioning on a specially equipped GMC wide side pickup. Now, boy, that'll sure keep you cool on those hot Texas highways. So for a special deal on a new GMC truck, take some free advice. And see your Houston area GMC dealer during super selling days. There's a new name at banks across Texas, an $18 billion resource with the strength to turn vision into reality and help you get the results you want. A resource to turn what is into what you want it to be. All the bank you'll ever need under one name. Interfirst. The resources you need to get the results you want. If you've been dreaming of life in the forest, you should be waking up to Houston's newest wooded community, Pecan Grove Plantation. It has small town atmosphere, more home for your money, and country club living for days and nights of relaxation and charm. So when you want to move up to something better, move down to the southwest and discover Pecan Grove Plantation. It's where the trees are, southwest of town. In business, some people want to look good at any cost. Send this to headquarters by one of those overnight systems. That's about $20. But some look good for less. Send this overnight to headquarters by express mail service from the post office. The express mail two-pound pack is only $9.35. And we deliver over 60,000 packages on time every day. You want to look good. Headquarters likes your style. And we make you look good for less. Express mail next day service from the post office. We're looking at a satellite photograph taken at 9 o'clock tonight, an intense area of low pressure extending from northern Arizona across to central Oklahoma down into south Texas and back into the southern part of New Mexico is pumping a lot of moist air up into west Texas. That's been causing severe weather all day long, and that intense area of low pressure is drifting in an easterly direction. It could affect our weather during the night tonight and during the morning tomorrow. Here is another satellite photograph, this one taken less than an hour ago at 9.30 tonight. There are still three separate areas areas of north, central, and west Texas that are under severe thunderstorm and tornado watches until late tonight and early tomorrow morning. As a rule, these tornado watches have been in effect for most of the day, and just at about the time they should go out of effect, they are extended. They were extended from 4 o'clock this afternoon until 11 o'clock tonight, and now the National Severe Storms Forecast Center has extended these tornado watches until 4 o'clock tomorrow morning. So far, we've had reports of at least a dozen tornadoes, a dozen twisters, generally between Del Rio in this area and Wichita Falls, extending on up into the central part of Oklahoma. We've had no reports or very few reports of damage or injuries, with the exception of this. Authorities report a tornado touched down in at least two residential areas of Wichita Falls tonight. That's the same city that was devastated by a twister three years ago. One person was reported injured, but it was not immediately clear if the person was hit by a tornado or if they uh, were subject to the severe flooding that police say has swept people down streets and stranded others in their cars. Very bad flooding problems in North Texas. And then just moments ago, the National Weather Service says it cannot confirm the tornado reported by authorities in Wichita Falls. However, severe flooding does continue in Wichita Falls. There was also at around uh, 8 o'clock this evening, or a little bit after 8 o'clock, a tornado sighted to the northwest of Del Rio, drifting in a southeasterly direction. It was on the ground. People in Del Rio were told to take cover. We've had no further reports as to whether that tornado stayed on the ground and went through Wichita Falls. The important thing for us is that this entire area of weather is drifting in an easterly direction. 
As a result of that, flooding is possible in most of South and Southeast Texas. So far, about all we've had have been heavy wind gusts. That's because of the strong low pressure to the west combined with high pressure to the east, and that's caused very strong south and southeasterly winds. One northwest Houston homeowner returned to uh, home from work late this afternoon and found a gigantic tree, a 15-foot tall oak tree, had been uprooted and was resting on a neighbor's garage. Jim McNelly says the reason behind the surprise tree toppling may have been a freak windstorm in the Oak Forest area. Neighbors who were home at the time say the tree fell uh, when the wind suddenly picked up and a very strong gust blew the tree over. Strangely enough, a similar freak storm was reported in that same area last year. One tree blown over so far in Houston today, there may have been other wind damage. Eyewitness radar has been scanning on the long range all day, still not picking up significant shower activity anywhere near Houston. However, because severe, uh, because heavy rains could move in during the night, a flash flood watch remains in effect. Much of southeast Texas, including Houston, expects heavy rains through tomorrow morning. If you live in flood prone areas, you should remain alert for changing weather conditions. Our low temperature this morning was 72, high this afternoon, 80 about three quarters of an inch of rainfall in the past 24 hours. It's 76 right now at Intercontinental Airport and downtown, 75 at Hobby. Barometer steady, wind southeasterly, the relative humidity 76%. We're calling for cloudy skies tomorrow, a 50% chance of rain until sunrise, an 80% chance of rain during the day tomorrow, a 50% chance of rain tomorrow night. Things should begin to get better on Friday with partly sunny skies and only a 20% chance of rain. And the rain could be all over by late Friday and early on Saturday. But Sylvan is, <clears throat> pardon me, it is very important for people to realize that even though there's no rain headed in our direction right now, it could develop at any time, and we could have some bad rainfall tomorrow morning. So we'll keep a lookout on that. Thank Indeed. you very much. And right now we are just getting information about a plane crash in Arkansas, and we'll have that for you when we continue. Straight out of medical school, Fannin loaned me money to get into private practice. <laughs> Neither one of us have slowed down since. They're one of the top ten. And they handle all the financial things that I don't have the time for. CDs, letters of credit, and a retirement plan. At a time when so many banks seem more interested in money and success than in people, they're very special. But the best thing about Fannin Bank, the very best. Fannin Bank. There's no end to the ways we can help. Now, Ford blasts through truck prices with $1,000 back, 100% from Ford on tough Broncos, and $2,000 back on XLT club wagons and $500 on vans. There are big price breaks, $500 to $750 on most Ford pickups and 4x4s, and $1,000 on tough Ford mediums. So get the jump on truck prices and get up to $2,000 back, 100% from Ford. It's big. It's now. The hands of Concord Centurion, the hands of Jimmy Connors. Powerful, elegant, ultra-thin, very flexible. The Concord Centurion makes the bulky sports watch passe. 18 karat gold. The Concord Centurion. It's so comfortable, I don't even know what's on. Water-resistant, electronic quartz, handcrafted in Switzerland. For him or her, the Concord Centurion. Available at Neiman Marcus, Galleria Post Oak. America's largest home builder, U.S. Home, buying quality materials to make quality homes in good neighborhoods at affordable prices. U.S. Home, sheltering more Americans than any other builder. U.S. Home, the leader. That's why America calls us home. Information is still coming in, but what we know so far is that authorities in Arkansas report an Air Force C-130 exploded and crashed in the east-central part of that state, about 60 miles east of Little Rock. Tonight, state police say they have received reports that six or seven people were aboard. There are no reports as to how many survived. Three British TV journalists were kidnapped today in Buenos Aires and later found unharmed. They will be interviewed tonight on Nightline. For now, that's our news. We thank you for being with us. We hope that you have a real good night. Eyewitness News is the number one news program in Texas.